Well, it's a real pleasure to be here and to have a chance just to meet with you and talk about some of the problems that we're facing. Now, some of these problems are local, some are national, some are global, but they're all tied together. They're tied together with arithmetic, and the arithmetic isn't very difficult. And what I hope to do is I hope to be able to convince you that the greatest shortcoming of the human race is our inability to understand the exponential function. In the summer of 1986, the news reports indicated that the world population had reached the number 5 billion people growing at the rate of 1.7 percent per year. Well, your reaction to 1.7 might be to say, that's so small. Nothing bad could ever happen at 1.7 percent per year. So you calculate the doubling time, you find it's only 41 years. More recently, in 1999, we read that the world population had increased from 5 billion to 6 billion people. The good news is that the growth rate had dropped from 1.7 percent per year to 1.3 percent per year. The bad news is that in spite of the drop in the growth rate, the world population today is increasing by something over 80 million people every year. Now if this modest current 1.3 percent per year could continue, the world population would grow to a density of one person per square meter on the dry land surface of the earth in just 780 years, and the mass of people would equal the mass of the earth in just 2,400 years. Now we can smile at those. We know they couldn't happen. This one makes for a cute cartoon. The caption says, excuse me, sir, but I am prepared to make you a rather attractive offer for your square. Now there's a very profound lesson in that cartoon. The lesson is that zero population growth is going to happen. Now we can debate whether we like zero population growth or don't like it. It's going to happen whether we debate it or not, whether we like it or not. It's absolutely certain people could not live at that density on the dry land surface of the earth. Therefore today's high birth rates will drop. Today's low death rates will rise till they have exactly the same numerical value that will certainly be in a time short compared to 780 years. So maybe you're wondering what sort of options are available if we wanted to address the problem. In the left-hand column, I've listed some of those things that we should encourage if we want to raise the rate of growth of population and in so doing make the problem worse. Just look at the list. Everything in the list is as sacred as motherhood. There's immigration medicine, public health, sanitation. These are all devoted to the humane goals of lowering the death rate. And that's very important to me if it's my death they're lowering. But then I have to realize that anything that just lowers the death rate makes the population problem worse. There's peace, law and order. Scientific agriculture has lowered the death rate due to famine. That just makes the population problem worse. The 55 mile an hour speed limit saved thousands of lives. That makes the population problem worse. Clean air makes it worse. Now in this column are some of the things we should encourage if we want to lower the rate of growth of population and in so doing help solve the population problem. Well, there's abstention, contraception, abortion, small families, stop immigration, disease, war, murder, famine, accidents. Now, smoking clearly raises the death rate. Now, that helps solve the problem. Well, remember our conclusion from the cartoon of one person per square meter, we concluded that zero population growth is going to happen. Let's state that conclusion in other terms and say it's obvious nature is going to choose from the right-hand list and we don't have to do anything. Except be prepared to live with whatever nature chooses from that right-hand list. Or we can exercise the one option that's open to us. And that option is to choose first from the right-hand list. We've got to find something here we can go out and campaign for. Anyone here for promoting disease? We now have the capability of incredible war. Would you like more murder, more famine, more accidents? Well, here we can see the human dilemma because everything we regard as good makes the population problem worse. Everything we regard as bad helps solve the problem. Now there is a dilemma, if ever there was one. 
And the one remaining question is education. Does it go in the left-hand column or the right-hand column? Well, I'd have to say thus far it's been firmly in the left-hand column. It hasn't done much about reducing ignorance of the problem. And nature is already choosing from that right-hand list. You read about the AIDS epidemic that's devastating the continent of Africa. I had a friend back from Zimbabwe. People, he said, are dying on the streets. Nature's taking care of the problem. Coronaviruses are a family of contagious viruses that can cause respiratory infections from the common cold to SARS. These viruses can mutate rapidly, resulting in the 2019 new coronavirus named SARS coronavirus 2, which has crown-like spikes that characterize the family. As with most viruses, SARS coronavirus 2 commonly spreads from an infected person to others through droplets in the air when coughing and sneezing, through close personal contact, or by touching a contaminated surface and then touching the face. Unless controlled, each infection typically results in two to three subsequent people being infected. Like other coronaviruses, SARS coronavirus 2 deposits its genetic material into host cells. The viral RNA reaches host elements called ribosomes, which act as factories that produce viral proteins. This facilitates replication of the viral genome and assembly of viral components, producing fully formed replicants that are secreted and further spread infection. Infection caused by SARS coronavirus 2 is known as COVID-19 and can cause fever, coughing and breathing difficulties, along with cold-like symptoms. Serious cases of COVID-19 can cause pneumonia, severe acute respiratory syndrome, kidney failure, and can lead to fatalities. Global health organizations have outlined preventive measures to reduce the chances of SARS coronavirus 2 infection, including refraining from touching the face with unclean hands and frequent hand washing with soapy water. As with previous global outbreaks such as swine flu, COVID-19 has gained global attention and treatment development is being accelerated.